If you've seen any of the videos on my channel, then you can probably tell that I like new technology just as much as I like old technology. What does this have to do with anything? Well, everything that I make ranges from something made in the 80s or 90s compared to something that is more modern. Going into that further, the compact cassette. So what am I actually talking about? It involves the cassette, specifically compact cassette, or devices that use belts. Now, these are some belts that I got off Amazon. This is actually a 90 pack of belts. And this is going to help me bring some of my players back to life because at this point, I have more non-functional players than I do functional ones. Belts degrade over time and they usually fall apart and disintegrate. So if you're using something, even if it's new old stock from back in the day, then chances are it's probably not going to work unless it's some sort of super high-end direct drive model where it doesn't need any sort of belts. Today we are going to look at these belts, see if these are actually any good, and we're going to test them out on a player that is otherwise in basically brand new condition, but is kind of unusable because the cassette mechanism is currently non-functional. Now it's not the perfect organization, and I'm sure that some of these were mixed up. So far, first impressions, these belts do seem like they are in good condition. They have good elasticity. The reason why you can't use something like a rubber band, even though it would work, it just won't last. It'll break. It's better to just get an actual replacement belt instead of trying to fix it in some other way. So this is the part of the video where everything goes not according to plan, which unfortunately is a pretty regular occurrence these days. But besides that, to get straight to the point, this specific Sony boombox here, model number CFS1030, the one I have is in almost basically brand new condition. And I was assuming that this mechanism inside would be fully operational. I have opened up this unit before because the belts inside them actually have disintegrated and I've since cleaned up the mechanism and I had hoped that this would be working just fine whenever I put in the new replacement belts and it is able to fast forward and rewind but unfortunately it's not able to play back a tape. Now, the reason why I can do this is because during fast forward and rewind, it's actually the belt that is doing that motion, but unfortunately in playback mode, it's not specifically just by the belt. There is another wheel that comes into contact with yet another wheel, and the smaller one has a rubber ring that goes around it, and unfortunately that is not making good contact with the specific larger wheel that is supposed to control the playback operation. Now I have tried cleaning this and it has not helped at all. I also don't have a compatible ring that can go around this specific wheel. I can't really do anything else with this unit unless I get another replacement part or find a small enough belt that actually fits on it, which probably won't be the best solution. But whatever I do find in the future, I'm hoping that this mechanism will actually be able to work just fine because if it can rewind and fast forward, then surely it should be able to play back a tape. It's just because of that one wheel that's causing all these problems. And let me say again, this is not a result of the belt itself. This is a result of the mechanism that is preventing us from playing a tape. So this next machine, which is this Philips boombox, I decided to just skip entirely for this whole video because this was supposed to be a quick video about simple cassette deck belts. And this Philips was going to require a lot more work than just that. Now the cassette deck itself does not work on this machine. The CD tray does work, but it's a little iffy. And this was just going to take way too much time for a video like this. So it will probably be a project in a future video, but definitely not today because it took forever to even partially open it up because it has a lot of screws and because they are actually Torx security screws I wasn't even able to open it up fully because the specific screwdrivers that I have aren't even able to reach some of them and not to mention it's in far worse shape than the Sony it actually has a lot of dirt and debris inside so this is going to be a whole restoration type of deal but even though they aren't in exactly the greatest condition either of those boom boxes I'm not going to leave them behind I will revisit them in a future video but for this simple review video it was just going to take way too much time and I just wanted to get something working 
So, wouldn't you believe it, even with a third mechanism into the mix, this one still doesn't want to work. But it's not a mechanical issue. Rather, I believe that this Walkman has some electrical issues or potentially bad capacitors or something of that because there's just no sound output. I've tried it with different headphones, speakers, it just doesn't want to play a tape. It will actually move the tape across and it'll play it as it should, but you can't hear anything. As it is right now, it's just not usable because, well, you can't actually listen to the cassette. I'm sure someday in the future I might be able to revisit this mechanism as well or at least find a donor machine to transfer parts over or whatever the case may be. This one was actually able to work with the replacement belts in the kit but you can't use this one either. So with that here is our fourth and actually final mechanism. So, fourth time's the charm, right? This is exactly what you want in a video like this. <laughs> the belts themselves don't have any problems that I can see anyways. They do actually have a good belt quality to them. They're made properly. It's not the problem of the belts. It's the problem that I keep choosing players which have more problems that are not as easy to fix as a belt replacement. In this case though, this Walkman does work. I have used it before and I'm sure this would benefit from a belt replacement. I'll give a quick demonstration of how it sounds like because whenever you first put in a cassette and the player itself hasn't been used in a long time, it actually takes it a couple of seconds to get up to proper speed. Now this one won't be as easy as the other Walkman because the other one just had four screws and the whole bag came off. This one because it's a sports one and it's made to be more durable with use, I'm pretty sure we'll have to access it from the inside. There are a couple of screws here that we might just have to remove. Also, I'm not sure why this recording is so bad. I'm pretty sure it's a combination of a bad transfer onto this Type 1 tape, and it's certainly not doing this Walkman any favors. Just know that the audio quality from this Walkman can actually be extremely good when combined with a good quality tape and it has a good quality recording on it. So I thought that the mechanism would be contained within the main chassis here, but removing those three screws actually took the whole thing out. So it turns out that this Walkman is actually built like a sandwich. And it's actually a good thing that I opened it up because it was otherwise relatively clean inside, but there was actually some corrosion on one of the battery terminals as well as on the LCD flex cable. Well, it's not perfect, but I did actually get all the corrosion off, especially on that ribbon cable. Now that doesn't look like it's in very good condition but it's still functional and I'm pretty sure that preventative maintenance of cleaning off the corrosion has definitely helped out. Now the housing itself it was all right it wasn't that bad. Some spots I can't get good access to but otherwise I've cleaned everything off and there was a lot of corrosion on that tab. It's clean now all the green corrosion is off. Same thing on the other side there. Thankfully it seems like the entire battery bay was enclosed so this is one half and then the rest of it is in the other housing. So the rest of the chest is clean which is nice to see but surprisingly the other battery terminal did not have any corrosion whatsoever. I looked at the belt that was originally on the Walkman itself and it is actually a thinner belt compared to the ones in the kit but I found one that was the same size and I put it around the mechanism like it was before and it actually works. It is thicker, but everything spins freely and you can definitely tell that this is a brand new belt on this mechanism because now it works essentially like a brand new machine. We just now have to reassemble the whole thing together and make sure it works again. And hopefully this Walkman will actually work unlike the three other cassette decks that we've tried. So I forgot for a second that these were the ones I actually used to screw down the housing and I thought that I had misplaced them. But video footage is very helpful because then you can look back and see what you actually did. And that should be it. Make sure that the player actually turns on. That is a good sign right there. The LCD is working. and it's pretty much instantaneous. 
that's a definite improvement. We actually got a cassette mechanism to work without encountering other problems. Now, of course, the real test is to listen to the cassette again. Oh, and also just in case, I will not throw away the original belt because, well, it still kind of works and I won't leave it in with the brand new ones. So with a cassette inside, will it actually play? It does. Are they worth it? I think they are. Considering how many belts you get for the price you pay, this is actually a really good deal, and you never know when you might actually need another belt. These also aren't limited to only cassette decks, so anything like a DVD drive, CD drive, anything that relies on a particular belt, you'll be able to use one of these, most likely, because they have a variety of sizes, and the quality of the belt itself, I can definitely see these lasting for quite a long time. Because there was a slight difference in the thickness of the belt that we installed. The playback was actually a little bit too fast, but this one has a trick up its sleeve where underneath this cover here, there's actually a speed adjustment potentiometer. I was able to just play a cassette, listen to it by ear, and the cassette itself is now playing as it should. So it basically sounds like a brand new unit. I'll probably be using this even more now, considering I won't worry about the potentially aging belt that might disintegrate one day. To end off today's video, we're going to just have a small demonstration again of the playback on this specific cassette. And keep in mind, I'm not trying to get the best possible audio quality because there's a large difference between this cassette, which is a type two, and this one, which is a type one. So that's gonna end off today's video. Hopefully you found it informative and entertaining. If you wanna see further videos like this, then consider subscribing because that'll definitely help out the channel and you'll get to see more videos like this in the future. So that's it for now, and thank you very much for watching.